Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one because we are going to be testing out some Burt's Bees makeup. I was sent a little PR package from Burt's Bees and I had never really tested anything so I thought I would do a first impressions type video on camera. Just a little quick life update, you know how I do these at the beginning of my videos. I have my heart monitor on over the weekend and when I took it off, oh my gosh, I had the worst like pimply rash I've ever experienced. I'll put a picture right here. If you're squeamish, look away in three, two, one. Okay, you can look again. I didn't want to show it off too much because like it is pretty gross. But yeah, I had the worst allergic reaction. That's why I'm wearing like a high neck top because it's still not gone yet. Actually, this is a dress, but that's besides the point. So yeah, I had my heart monitor on all weekend. It was not a pleasant experience. I was so uncomfortable the whole time and all I could think about was like, oh my God, I want to rip this thing off. So that was definitely an experience. Not really a good one, but like an experience nonetheless. So yeah, that's pretty much my life update. I haven't gotten uh, any results back. I'm supposed to get the results back on May 31st. So we will see about that. But yeah, I got this little PR package from Burt's Bees. It had the new Rupi Car book. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name. I'm so sorry. I tried to look it up. That's what it said on Google, how to pronounce it. So I hope I'm at least like a little bit right. So they sent me her new book, Homebody. I've been really enjoying that. I have a really short attention span when it comes to reading. Um, I used to love to read, but as I grew up, I developed an anxiety and panic disorder. Order. As a result, I'm on antidepressants and a lot of medications to help me manage that and it makes my memory terrible. So I find that I'll start a new book and um, I'll, you know, start reading and then by like the next time I pick it up again, I've forgotten what's happened. And that makes me really upset. Um, I don't want to talk about it too much, but the way I've lost my memory because of my mental health is uh, really sad to me. My memory used to be really, really good. And the fact that it's already like diminishing at the age of 26 really upsets me. So the fact that it was a poetry book, I could just read short poems. And if I didn't remember what I'd already read, it doesn't matter because it's not really following a storyline. So maybe I'll purchase more poetry books because I did really enjoy that. And they also sent me like a little, uh, it's like a positive affirmation deck of cards. And every day you're supposed to pick one and read it to yourself out loud. And I think that that's really nice. I haven't really done it yet. I'm a little nervous, but I, I don't know why I'd just be reading it to myself. I should definitely do that because I do have like a lot of self-esteem issues. I feel like that could be really impactful. We'll see. I've heard a lot of good things about like positive affirmation and manifestation. So maybe I'll give that a go. I know that in Canada, Burt's Bees is sold at Shoppers Drug Mart. So definitely take a look there if you're interested in any of these products and you're Canadian. I'm not sure about America. So they did send me the Burt's Bees Miracle Bomb. This retail for $16 Canadian. The Burt's Bees 100% uh, Natural Origin Squeezy Tinted Lip Balms are $10.99. They sent me all four of them. They come in four colors and they're all scented differently, which is really nice. There's peach, berry, watermelon, and tangerine. <gasps> So pretty. They're like tinted lip balms, very fun. So those retail for $11 Canadian. And I feel like for a lip product, you get like quite a significant amount of product. Like this is 12.1 grams. I don't know how that's relative to other lip balms, but they also sent me the Goodness Glows Primer, hydrating and illuminating. It retails for $17. It's currently on sale for $12.99 at Shoppers Drug Mart. The new cream eyeshadows. There are three colors. So they look like this. So they sent me all three of them. These are $16 each. That's kind of a lot, actually. I didn't think they'd be that expensive. They also came out with some new cream blushes. Let me see how much these retail for. Burt's Bees has so many products I didn't really realize. I've heard a lot about their uh, powder blush in the shade Toasted Cinnamon. It's Kathleen Light's favorite product. Okay, here we go. So the Color Nurture Moisturizing Cream Blush with Vitamin E also retails for $17, is on sale for 13 at Shoppers Drug Mart. Again, that's kind of a bit pricey. So yeah, there are those and is that it? I think that's all they sent me. So they sent me all of their new launches, which is really fun. I had a lot of fun testing them out today. This is the look that I came up with. If I were to associate this look with a brand, Burt's Bees would definitely be one of them. It's very fresh, glowy, natural. And I feel like that's kind of Burt's Bees target demographic. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with how the look turned out. I'm going to do a wear test because I am a little bit concerned with the wear of some of these products just because they are like more natural and whatnot. So yeah, I will definitely wear these throughout the day and check back in with you. And without further ado, let's get into the swatches and demo. Okay, my friends, so I am going to start out with my eyeshadow today, as I normally do. Actually, I lied. I'm first going to take this 
This is called the Goodness Glows Miracle Balm with plant-derived squalene. I love that that's plant-derived. What is this described as? A miracle beauty balm for dry skin from head to toe, external use only. So I'm assuming this isn't vegan. Yeah, there's beeswax in it, so not vegan. It smells like hairspray. Like not in a bad way, it's not super strong. I was just surprised. I don't know why, but I thought it was gonna smell like rose. Anyway, I'm just going to use this product on my little lippies. They've been struggling a little bit. I haven't been wearing lip balm because I have these little white dots here. They're like oil glands, I guess. And uh, they've been driving me crazy and they get worse with lip balms, but my lips are really dry. So I need to bite the bullet and just put some on. Feels really nice, not sticky or annoying feeling. Awesome. Even though it's pink in here, there's no color, I don't think. Let me just confirm that like on my hand. Yeah, so it's just completely clear. I'm, you're not gonna be able to see that. I don't know why I put swatches in the worst places like ever. So yeah, you can kind of see it there, the shine, just like a clear salve. I will definitely get some good use out of this. Okay, and next I want to use these cream eyeshadows. I'm really excited. Didn't know that they had cream eyeshadows. Let's see if this is vegan. Okay, so these might be, oh no, there's carmine in this one, carmine in this one, and carmine in this one. Okay, so none of these are vegan, the cream eyeshadows. I'm not vegan, so I'm gonna use them, but just in case you were wondering, uh, they are not. I love the packaging. It says Burt's Bees on it and it's got a little honeycomb. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I think it's focused. How cute is that? So with me, I have the shade Caramel Buttercream. Wow, that sounds delicious. I have the shade uh, Honey Caramel. Oh, that also sounds yummy. And the shade Rose Cream. These cream eyeshadows are formulated without parabens, phthalates, petroleum, or SLS. All right, and actually I'm going to apply a couple of powder shadows first, but before I do that, I want to do some hand swatches. I was gonna do them on my arms, but uh, there's only three, so my hand should suffice. Oh, I don't know why, but I thought they were gonna be liquid, but they're definitely cream. I don't know why I thought they were gonna be like a, kind of like a ColourPop Jelly Much shadow texture. This kind of consistency makes much more sense for cream eyeshadow. Not like a ton of pigment. Well, now that I've built it up a little bit, there is. It's very subtle, but I guess that's kind of their brand. So this is the shade Caramel Buttercream. It has a really nice sheen to it. I think I'm just used to things being so reflective that when they're not, I'm just like, always kind of surprised. They feel really slippy. It's not a very thick consistency. They're melting into my finger very easily. Ooh, this one's nice. This one's a lot more pigmented. I think it might have been because the first shade is very similar to my skin tone. So this is the shade Honey Caramel. Again, not like crazy pigmented, but very subtle. It's a nice subtle sheen. I actually like how this formula feels. Looking at it, you're like, oh, I feel like that's gonna be dry, but then you put your finger in it. It kind of feels like coconut oil. And then this one here is the shade Rose Cream. So as you can see, they do have some reflective properties, but they're not like the most metallic. There is no coconut oil in here. I said it kind of feels like coconut oil. It looks like what I'm feeling might be the sunflower seed wax or the castor seed oil or the soybean oil. There's a lot of oils in here. That kind of makes me concerned about how it's gonna wear. So we are gonna do a wear test. Okay, so I do wanna apply a little bit of a base down. Oh, sorry, I have an itch. I do wanna apply a little bit of a base down before I go in with the cream shadows, just so I have like a little bit of a matte shade in the crease. I'm first going to apply my e.l.f. Camo Concealer and I'm going to go in with a dry beauty sponge because I forgot to wet this and I'm too lazy to get up. Love that for me. Okay, so just like that, using that as a little bit of a base, I am going going to go into the ColourPop, what is this? Little Ray of Sunshine palette. I knew it was something to do with sunshine. And I think I'm gonna go into this shade here. It's a bit more cool toned. It's called Blissed Out. I don't know why that was so hard for me to read because the font was white on a very light yellow, I guess. I don't have my nails on, so I keep going to flick my brush and like it hits my nail and my nails are so brittle that it actually kind of hurts. So I'm just going to take that color and just kind of stamp it throughout my crease. Nail salons are closed, so I haven't been, you know, getting my nails done. I usually do them myself, but I took them off recently just to give myself a fill, and it took so long that I just didn't do it until the next day. And I haven't really been picking my lips. That's the reason I always have nails on is because I pick the skin off my lips and it's not a good look and it's actually very detrimental. And I shouldn't be touching my mouth during a pandemic, so, I've been keeping my nails on, but since I haven't been picking my lip, I thought I'd give them a bit of a break because my natural nails have literally had fake ones on for 
probably around a year now, like straight, trying to give them a little bit of a break. They're really struggling. I don't know why I'm telling you that. I'm just like not used to it, I guess. Then I'm just gonna go into this lightest shade here called Suns Out, and I'm just gonna use this to like set the brow bone, just so things don't get blended up too high. Then I'm gonna go in with this really light taupe shade called Vitamin D. I'm just gonna use this on a Sigma E40 tapered blending brush. I really want more Sigma brushes. Now that Morphe's no longer cruelty free, which is very upsetting, and I'm just going to take this and kind of run it. I also find like the Sigma brushes that I do have, I have literally had for over 10 years. So like the quality is pretty unmatched. So I'm definitely gonna get more eventually. They're on my wish list. And then I'm just gonna dip into a little bit of that blessed out shade, just the first shade that I used on the same Sigma brush. And I'm just gonna kind of buff things out a little bit. I don't want to take anything too dark. I still want everything to be like super wearable. I feel like it got a little like patchy here. There's like a little bit of a dark patch. I don't know what that's about. It's not the end of the world. Like I'm just going to pet smart, but still it's a little bit annoying. I think I'm going to use my fingers for my eyeshadow because I don't have my nails on. So may as well while I can, you know, I'm going to first dip into the shade caramel buttercream. That was the lightest shade. And I'm just going to apply this to my eyelids. It's pretty, it just, it doesn't have like a ton of pigment. The other two definitely packed more of a punch, probably because they were deeper shades. It's still pretty though, I do like it. I don't know if I should go in with the pinky one or the bronzy one. Let's go pinky. I'm gonna use the shade Rose Cream. I love that name, Rose Cream. That sounds really yummy. If something is named after any sort of food, I'm all about it. Oh, I really like this one. Oh, I took it a little bit high. Oopsie daisies. Those are super pretty, especially if you like more of a subtle look. Now, I don't know how they're gonna wear, but we will determine that throughout the day. But if you like something more subtle that has like a glimmer, like it's definitely gonna brighten up the eyes, but it's not super metallic. It's definitely not what I'm used to, but it's not a bad thing, if that makes sense. Like this is definitely what some people are going for in a makeup look. It's pretty, I like it. Just off first application, we'll see how it wears again. And then I'm just gonna like, fan it to let it dry a little bit. And then I'm just gonna take that brown shade again and just kind of tap over here, just so that it kind of blends a little bit better. Oh, that got weird. Maybe don't apply eyeshadow over top of it. Well, no, no, it looks fine. Never mind. just had to tap it out a little bit with my finger. So far, it doesn't feel tacky anymore. It's already dried, so that's great. It kind of makes me feel like it might be a little more long wearing than I initially thought. I'm gonna do my other eye off camera and I will be back and we can test more products. Okay, so after doing this side, I don't know if I like the shadows. I'm just, I'm not sure. It looks really like patchy on this side. It's just not very flattering. It looks like it's already breaking up. I don't know, we'll see. But before I move on to the rest of the face, I'm gonna do that part off camera, but I just wanna try the Goodness Glows Primer, Hydrating and Illuminating Base. Is this vegan? It looks like this might actually be a vegan product. Um, I have my Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen on underneath this. I don't know how these two products are going to mix, but we will see, because that product's very silicone-y. It does have a little bit of like almost shimmer particles. Oh, it's very liquidy. You can see there. It's very thin. It smells, it does have a scent. Also kind of like hairspray-ish, kind of similar to the Balm. Yeah, there's like little particles of pink shimmer in here. Not to the point where I think it'll be unflattering. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but let's just apply it to the face, I guess. I do like hydrating primers lately, so I feel like this would kind of be up my alley. It does have a little bit of a white cast. I'm not sure how that would apply onto deeper skin tones or like even medium skin tones. This feels nice. I like this so far. It does feel hydrating. It's very thin. It does leave a little bit of tackiness, but like not enough where it's like annoying. I hate tackiness on the skin. Some primers like the Milk Hydro Grip, for example, like it's just too tacky for me. So this one has a little bit of stick, but like nothing too crazy. I would say it definitely gave me a glow. Uh, I don't know if that's because of the shimmers or if it's, yeah, I think it is because of the little shimmer particles, but it's not like an unflattering shimmer particle. Like it's not like chunks of glitter in there. I like this so far. So now I'm going to head off camera and apply my foundation and concealer. I just don't want to do it on camera because it just takes too long. 
Well, or should I do it on camera? Yeah, let's just do it, screw it. So I'm just applying my e.l.f. Uh, hydrating camo. I'm trying to remember to apply less product than I normally do. I just get so heavy handed with concealer. I don't know why I'm like that. And I did eventually have to go and uh, dampen my beauty sponge. So did eventually have to get up and may as well have done it at the beginning. Okay, so now that that's applied, I'm gonna use my beauty blender foundation because I do know how that one wears. So that way I can kind of see what the primer actually does. I don't know if I mentioned that. Did I even mention what the foundation I'm using? I'm using the Beauty Blender Bounce. I don't remember if I actually mentioned that. My memory is so bad today. I couldn't remember if I took my antidepressants this morning. So I may have taken them twice. I actually have no idea. It's probably not good, but my memory is just trash this morning. I'm not going in with too much because I don't want like crazy full coverage today. Like the eye look is very, you know, subdued. Just don't want anything too crazy. I still am probably going to apply false lashes though. So I guess I'm kind of, uh, contradicting myself there. I find I get so much redness around my brows. Does anyone else find that? Very weird spot. I feel like most people don't get redness there. Not that I've noticed anyways, but I'm always more picky with myself and I just ruined my eyebrow. That's great. Good for me. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm just gonna set my under eyes. I'm trying to use up my Milani translucent light to medium, what is this, make it last powder? Yes, make it last setting powder. I'm just setting my under eyes in kind of like this area because that's where I get oily. I feel like I shouldn't have done that because I'm applying cream blush. Mm. Oh well, what are you gonna do? Okay, so I am going to pop off camera and I'm just gonna finish up my eyes off camera and then yeah, we can test out these cream blushes. Oh, I guess I gotta update you on like what it actually looks like. It definitely does look more dewy, especially on the forehead area than what it normally does. So I would say that this primer does definitely give a glow. So that's kind of nice. I'm just gonna powder here too. I like it. So if you are looking for a glowy primer, this might be a good option. It's very flattering. You can see even though I've kind of set that area, I still have a little bit of a glow going. I like it so far. These cream eyeshadows though, look like they're already creasing. So I'm pretty sure that these are gonna be a no from me, but maybe they'll surprise me, we'll see. Okay, so I have applied a little bit of bronzer and now I am ready to apply some cream blush. So they sent me three shades. The lightest one that I have is the shade Guava Meringue. Oh, that sounds so yummy. I love all these names, like a very light, peachy pink. These do feel a little thicker than the cream eyeshadows, not as oily and slippy on the fingers. So that's the shade Guava Meringue. Oh, that's so pretty. I really like that color. This one's very thick. This one, the cap wasn't on properly, so this one might be a bit dried out. This is the shade Strawberry Cream. Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah, this one's very, very dried out. I'm trying to like scoop product. So that's it there. Oh, that's the shade Strawberry Cream. These are the worst swatches ever. And then the last shade we have is the shade Berry Whip. All of those sound delicious. I'm definitely gonna go for the lightest one, the shade Guava Meringue, just cause I feel like it'll suit my skin tone best. Okay, let's get into it. It's the exact same packaging for the blushes and the eyeshadows. So uh, yeah, just something to note. Very pretty, I like that color a lot, lot. I'm gonna try to use it on a brush. I don't know how that's gonna work though. This is a Morphe Y4. I don't think they sell this anymore. It doesn't really show up much with a brush. I'm gonna try using my finger. It's subtle. I feel like all of Burt's Bees makeup is kind of subtle though, you know? Um, see, I feel like it's just a little too small to fit the bum of my beauty blender. Beauty blender, beauty blender. I'm gonna scoop some out actually and put it on the back of my hand so that I can get it on my sponge. It's definitely there though. Like I do see it still. I'm just trying other ways of applying it. it. Doesn't apply very nicely with a beauty sponge. I think a brush is definitely the way to go. Just in terms of color payoff. Oh yeah, definitely. Really pretty. I like that. That's really nice. I really like that. Definitely apply it with a brush though. Man, I feel like I'm gonna go overboard, but I just can't help it. They're very pretty. You're fair, this is a really pretty one. And then I'm just gonna take my beauty sponge and just kind of help to blend that a little bit. It didn't get weird too, and I applied um, a powder bronzer underneath. I just wasn't feeling my milk cream bronzer. As I use that one more, I feel like it looks a little bit orangey on me. And then to highlight, I'm gonna go in with the cream shadow in the shade Caramel Buttercream. That's the lightest one right here and we're going to use this as a cream highlight because why not so I'm just applying it with my finger first and then I'm gonna go in with my sponge and just kind of oh this is hard to blend out uh oh 
Did I make a mistake? Finally got that to blend out. Don't dab it too intensely. Like spread it on your finger a little bit because it dries fairly quickly and it's kind of hard to blend out after that. Oh, it broke up my foundation. Ah, you can see it. I'll zoom you in. I'll take a picture of it if you can't see it, but it definitely broke up my foundation. Maybe not the best idea to try to use it as a cream highlight, but it said on the box that you could. I don't know. You know what? It looks way better on this side. I think because on this side I tried to apply it with a sponge and like blend it in that way. I think that's why it didn't really work for me on that side. Cause this side, it didn't break up my foundation at all. I would definitely say apply it with your fingers. That's the best way to do it. It's pretty, definitely not my favorite, but it's pretty. Mm, I actually really like it on this side. This side, not so much because I kind of screwed it up. And now we can move on to the lip products. I'm just gonna swatch them and then we can kind of pick which one to use. Okay, so I've applied a little bit of lip liner. This is Tea and Cookies by NYX. I thought it was gonna be a lot more of a nudie pink, but it's a very bright pink. But regardless, let's just get into these, which are the Squeezy Tinted Bombs, which I'm so excited for. Are these vegan? Looks like maybe? It's really small writing, so if I miss something, yeah, it might be, I, I can't tell. Okay, <laughs> just gonna stop pretending like I know what I'm talking about. So it comes in four colors slash flavors because they are all different scents, which is really nice. I love when things have different scents, like each product has a different smell. That's just such a nice touch in my opinion. So I'm gonna start out with the lightest one. This one is Sweet Peach. You get a lot of product in here too. Mm-hmm, definitely smells like peach. Wow, a lot came out, oh no. Okay, well that's gonna be a swatch on the hands and the lips, I guess. Very thin and glossy, ooh. Look how pretty, oh, I'm excited. It's very sheer. It's kind of mixing in with the uh, lip liner to create a different color, so uh, maybe that wasn't a good idea on my part. I like that one. Mmm, that's pretty. Not sticky at all, very balmy feeling. Definitely my kind of product. I hate sticky lip colors, it's like my pet peeve. Tastes kind of like artificial, but it's because it is an artificial flavor. Mmm, I like it, I like it a lot. I feel like this would be like a great product to throw in your purse. Okay, I'm not gonna put lip liner on this time because that was a dumb idea. The next shade I'm gonna talk about is the shade, what is this, Berry Sorbet. Doesn't that just sound so yummy? That's that shade right there. It's more of a pink, I thought it was gonna be deeper based on the packaging, but I guess with the sheerness, it isn't. It smells like, like wild berry. Oh, I love this one. I love this type of color. <gasps> I'm gonna love all of them. You know who would love one of these? My mom. Probably gonna give her one because I don't need four. That is such a pretty color. Wow. I love that. I love that. I love that. These are definitely things that I would wear like on zero makeup days. Just like go to the grocery store just to like add some hydration to the lips, add a little bit of color, a little bit of shine. So the next shade we have is called Watermelon Rush. Mmm, very watermelony. Smells like a Jolly Rancher almost. Kind of hard to squeeze out. Oh, that's a deep color. Ooh, this would be like a really nice summer color. It's like a really kind of bright pink-ish red. Oh, this is so pretty too. I feel like this shade on a deeper skin tone would be so lovely. These are very universal though. Like I feel like anyone could wear them. That's what I kind of like about this collection. First of all, they sent me like a good amount of shades, not like a lot of shades, but a good range, like one that's lighter, one that's kind of medium, one that's deeper. And since they are like more sheer products, I feel like they have a lot more wiggle room for different skin tones, if that makes sense. That's a really pretty color for summer. Oh, love, so pretty. Okay, and the last one we have is called Mandarin Granita. This one also looks like it's gonna be deeper. Oh. Oh, that one like had like almost one of those ketchup burps. You know when like you squeeze out ketchup and just oil comes out? This one has more orange. I mean, I guess that's why it's called Mandarin. It's like a rusty color. Definitely smells more orangey too. So this is the peach shade. We have the berry, the watermelon, and the Mandarin. Really nice range of colors. Now let's apply the Mandarin to the lips. Mmm, ooh, this in the fall time. Mmm, or the summertime, whatever you want, you know? There are no rules. I love these. Okay, I'm just gonna head off camera and apply some false lashes because I just feel incomplete without them and I will be right back. Okay, friends, so I applied some half lashes and and this is the completed look. I do like it. I think it's pretty. I will definitely check back in with you throughout the day so we can see how everything is wearing and I think that will definitely influence my final opinion. But I'm still going to give you a little bit of a rundown on the products that I tried today. The cream eyeshadow, 
I could take it or leave it. It's not my favorite. It is pretty, but I don't know. It's just a little bit sheer. If you're going for a natural look, then maybe. I just, I'm not convinced that this is gonna be long lasting. I do like it as a cheek highlight. I think it's very pretty, but yeah, I feel like it looked a little bit patchy when I applied it. It wasn't super pigmented, which not everything has to go on super pigmented. There is definitely a market for like more sheer natural products. However, I think that if a product is more sheer and natural looking, it needs to apply nicely and not look super cakey when applied to the eyes. And I found that this product kind of did that a little bit, specifically the lighter shade. If I can find it, all of these packages look the same. The shade Caramel Buttercream. It's just, it's just okay. We'll see how it wears and that will definitely influence my opinion on this product. The Goodness Glows Primer, Hydrating and Illuminating. I feel very hydrated. I think this did a great job. It did exactly what it said it was gonna do. My Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation does look quite a bit more glowy than I normally go for. If you have dry skin, this might be a really good option for you. My only concern is that it went on kind of whitish. So if you have any warmth to your skin, like if you're not super pasty like me, it might be a little weird. And by that, I mean it might go on a little bit ashy. I'm not really sure, but that would be a concern of mine with this product. But on my skin tone, it looked really nice. The cream blushes, I only used the one shade, uh, Guava Meringue. I actually really like it. I think it's really pretty. Definitely best applied with a brush. But yeah, I think it's very beautiful. It applied decently over powder, which I don't expect it to. Like I don't fault a cream product if it doesn't layer nicely over powder, but the fact that it did is definitely a plus. It makes things a lot easier in my personal routine because I do use mostly like powder bronzers. And I think my favorite product of them all was definitely the squeezy tinted bombs. I think these are so fun. I think my favorite scent is the watermelon rush. I think if there is one color that you like in particular, I would definitely recommend these. They're so much fun. Perfect for your purse, perfect for by the pool, perfect for summer. And also perfect for no makeup days. I really like this. I didn't really use this one much, but the Goodness Glows Miracle Balm, I do like it. It worked nicely on my lips. Uh, I definitely have to try it out some other places, maybe my elbows or something. I do get some eczema on my elbows, so maybe that would be like a good way to test it out. I also get some dry patches on my eye area, so this could be like a good treatment just for like, I get this one dry patch right here. So maybe I can try that there. That might be helpful. But yeah, long story short, I liked pretty much everything that I tried except for the cream eyeshadows. Those weren't my favorite, but I think if you like something a little more natural, these might be up your alley. Yeah, we'll definitely see how it wears. That's going to be a big factor. And yeah, I think that is it for my first impressions and I will check back in with you later in the day. Okay, my friends. So it is now 4.30 PM. I've been wearing this makeup for about six hours. First of all, I am super oily as you can see, especially in this area. Also my forehead and my chin is pretty oily as well. Uh, I would say the hydrating primer works. Usually when I wear the Beauty Blender foundation, I am not this oily by the six hour mark. It's a pretty matte foundation on me. Uh, one thing I did want to note, I don't know if this has to do with the primer or the cream eyeshadows or what, but I used the NYX On The Rise mascara today and it flaked off like quite a bit onto my cheekbones and I don't know what that's about. That's never really happened to me with that mascara. So I think that's interesting. I don't know what product uh, made my mascara do that or if the mascara is just getting old. Uh, it's hard to say. The lip balm wore off fairly quickly. That's usually expected though. The highlighter is starting to fade a little bit. The cream blush is still going strong. Um, actually, I guess it's a cream eyeshadow. It's not even supposed to be a highlighter. So also the cream eyeshadows didn't crease. So I think that's uh, kind of nice. I definitely expected them to by this point. That being said, I do have a dry eye area. So if you have an oily eye area, I don't know, maybe proceed with caution. What else did I try today? I think that's it. Definitely better than I expected. I think that the cream eyeshadows are a little bit overpriced, like $17. That's quite a bit for a single cream shadow, especially at the drugstore. I feel like if you were going for something like that, you could go for like a ColourPop Super Shock shadow, maybe one that's not like the super glittery formula if you're looking for something that's a little more subtle. They do have like subtle satin finishes and those are only $6 in comparison. I just don't know if the cream eyeshadows were, you know, worth, a $17 price tag. Like they were 
good, but like not that good. Maybe if there's a sale, that would be a good opportunity for you to pick one up. Otherwise, honestly, there are a lot of other brands that do cream shadows and I'm sure a lot of them will be more affordable. I am itching to get my makeup off, so that's gonna be it for me today. And that's everything for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. It was really fun to test out some Burt's Bees makeup. I've never really tried the brand before, so if you have any Burt's Bees products that you really love that isn't like their traditional lip balm, I have tested that. But yeah, if you have any makeup products from Burt's Bees that you really like, I would love to hear them in the comments down below. Maybe I'll check them out because I did have overall a fairly good experience. And yeah, I think that's everything for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. Please don't forget to subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's okay. I just really appreciate you being here. It helps out my channel so very much by you watching. So thank you. Please leave any video requests you may have in the comments down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.